So when you guys are graphing log functions, now um, log functions are the inverse of exponential functions. So that's what this picture here is trying to show you guys. The blue function is the exponential. Those functions you guys graphed in that first lesson. The red functions are the logarithms, the log functions. So what happens is because they're inverses of each other, their domain and range switch. And if that exponential function has a value of 0, 1, your log function is going to have a value of 1, 0 as an ordered pair. Your exponential functions have horizontal asymptote. These log functions have vertical asymptotes. So unless something is being added or subtracted, as always, this is just the parent function, that vertical asymptote right now is at zero. So nothing should ever be on the left-hand side of that asymptote. It should always be on the right-hand side. So when you guys are graphing these, one is rising as it goes to the right and one is falling as it goes to the left or goes to the right. So if you guys take notice, that's going to be if that base is smaller than one or if it's larger than one. So if your base is larger than one, it's going to rise. And if that base is smaller, it's going to fall to the right. So let's go ahead and actually try to graph some of these. Okay, so just for learning purposes, I rewrote this function for number 9 as log base 2 thirds of x plus 0 plus 0. Sometimes you will have a value here or here. In this case, you don't. But this value on the inside of your parentheses, that is your vertical asymptote. That's what gives you your vertical asymptote, and it's always opposite, guys. Just like every other function... If it's in the heart of that function, on the inside of something, or part of something, that moves it. It moves things horizontally. So that gives you your vertical asymptote. So in this case, there is your vertical asymptote is not moving, so it is going to stay at 0. But we need to find values for this. So here's the weird thing with log functions. You guys, your entire life, have plugged values in for x to get y in your x, y tables. But for logs, we actually need to plug in values for y and solve for x. So what happens is we undo the log to solve. So I always plug in the value that's being added at the end, so this value here, which is 0, and then 1 more than that. So I always plug in 1. It just makes it for smaller values, and then it's usually on your graph, numbers that are on your graph. And you, if it ever asks you guys to find the x-intercept, then you have to plug in 0. But let's plug in these values and get... Two points. And like I said, you don't have it doesn't have to be anything crazy here, guys. I don't need 10 or 12 points. So let's just do zero first. So zero equals log two thirds of x. So we need to undo that log. So what's gonna happen is the two thirds is gonna come over here, and this is gonna become two thirds to the power of of 0 equals logs gone x. Anything to the 0 power is what? Not 0, but 1. So x is 1. Okay, now let's plug in 1 for y. 1 equals log of or base 2 thirds of x. 2 thirds comes over, log is gone. 2 thirds to the first power equals x. Well, 
you guys could put that in parentheses. So 2 to the 1st over 3 to the 1st is still just 2 thirds. So 2 thirds. You guys could plug in more points, but like I said, I don't need a lot of points. 2 is fine. So 1, 0. And 2 thirds, 1. So this is where it helps to know what your graph looks like. So if you don't know what your graph should look like, then you may need to graph more than two points because you don't, based off those two points, that could be a straight line for all you know. But remember, your graphs are either going to fall to the right or rise to the right. And because your base here is less than one, this is one where it falls. So it's going to run along that asymptote and go to the right. Now if it asks for your domain and range, which in this case it doesn't, but if it did ask for your domain and range, because it switched from your exponential equations, your domain used to be negative to positive for the exponential. So for this, the range is going to be negative to positive because there's no spot where it stops in the y direction or anywhere where it's restricted. So the range for your log functions will always be negative to positive infinity. And the domain is going to be from that vertical asymptote to positive infinity because it's always on the right. So in this case, it would be zero to positive infinity. So I'm going to do number 11 with you guys yet, and then you guys need to try 8 and 10. So for number 11, this one is written in that form that I rewrote the other one in. x minus 2. Vertical asymptote opposite. So it's going to be at positive 2. So there should be nothing on the left-hand side of this graph. Everything is going to be on the right-hand side. So we need to plug in at least two values to solve. So again, xy table. So just don't get confused, guys, when you're plugging this in because your brain is so used to plugging in x to get y that when you plug in a y value to get x, your brain is going to tell you to plot it in that order. So you're going to try to go in the y direction horizontally and the x direction vertically because that's what your brain says. So just don't get your ordered pairs screwed up because you're so used to doing it the other way. So like I said, guys, I always plug in the value that's being added at the end and then one more than that. Because what's going to happen is you'll be able to subtract that. It'll make it zero and the other one will give you one. So let's plug these in. So 3 equals log base 3 of x minus 2 plus 3. So we're going to subtract the 3 first. We undo that log last, guys. This log expression. We have to undo that last. So if there's anything being added or subtracted at the end, you have to get rid of that first. So 0 equals log base 3 of x minus 2. Now we can undo the log. So that will get rid of the log, and this becomes 3 to the 0 equals x minus 2. So 3 to the 0 power, anything to the 0 power is 1, equals x minus 2. So what is 1 plus 2? 3. And then let's plug in 4. And I ran out of room because I wrote that too big. So we'll just do it down here in the corner. So 4 equals log base 3 of x plus 2 plus 3. So we subtract the 3 and get 1. Uh, 
undo the log, get 3 to the first power equals x plus 2. Log is now gone. So 3 to the first is 3. Subtract the 2 and you get x equals 1. So if we plot our two points, we have 3, 3. So from the origin, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And then... I just realized I made my minus 2 a plus 2. So I'm going to make these all need to be minus. So that's going to be a minus 2, which means we should have added 2. So 3 plus 2 is actually... Five. So let's fix that. And we'll plot that then. So one, two, three, four, five off your grid, but that's okay. One, two, three, four. And I'll just draw it. So this one would be rising as it goes to the right. So why don't you guys go ahead and try 8 and 10. If you guys need any help, let me know.